one of the downfalls that I felt like that I've, I've let the community down on a little bit is helping to mentor and coach some of these younger guys that are, that are good esports athletes and shaping them into better esports professionals. You know, the problem is, is that you can imagine if a high school uh, soccer team didn't have a coach. It did not have an adult coach, and the players were responsible for showing up to practice. They were responsible for showing up at games, and they were responsible for making assignments. There would never be anybody, no one would ever get along. The games would be pure chaos. You know, everybody would want to be a forward. No one would want to be back and be a defender because they all want to be the, the, in the spotlight. You know, there's a reason why high school kids are coached by adults. They need, not necessarily the adults know the game or play the game better, they're mature and they know the steps to put the players through so that the, the players put, put the time in and practice, they play the positions they need to play on the field or on the court, and that's what needs to happen for these young guys. So, you know, we're not giving them a chance. MLG's saying, hey, come to our events and show up. And so these, these high school guys put together teams and they spend all their money driving to an MLG event. And they show up and they don't do well. And they get discouraged and they go home and they just split up as a team or they start jumping around to other teams again and they don't commit to each other. They have no direction and they have nobody to mentor and lead them. So I feel like that it's our responsibility, those of us that are mature in the community that have been around a while, to put the structure in place to help these teams stay together, to help these teams put good practice time in, and also to make them understand a lot of times it's not about their individual performance. Professional athletes and other sports understand it's about how they can promote their own teams and promote the brands that surround their teams and that's what's successful because that's what sells tickets. So a lot of these guys go after these sponsors because they know, oh, I'm going to be in front of the, the, the cameras, I'm going to be broadcast on Twitch, you want to give me some money so that you can put your gaming gear or your drink or your headset or whatever on my shirt. You know, it's, it's the cart before the horse thing. First of all, you've got to be successful and you've got to get viewership and you've got to build up a brand around yourself and your personality. You know, it's not necessarily how you play as much as how you interact with your fans. You know, I don't know, maybe it's a thing where a lot of these guys need to get agents. And they need to have an agent that helps them build their reputation and build their the way they're viewed from the community so that they interact better. Some of the most popular guys in League of Legends are individuals that are fun to listen to while they play. So they'll have their headset on and they'll play and they'll, they'll give some insight of what they're doing, but they're also very witty and they're fun outside of the game to listen to while they're talking. So, you know, a lot of that is just built over time and it's, it's built on maturity, which some of these young guys don't have. I think eSports is, is gonna have a real telling year in 2014. I think that it, 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 it is teetering on the edge of going down the road that it did five years ago where when the recession hit, you know, people couldn't travel anymore and no one was watching these TV produced events that, that CBS Sports and DirecTV thought were going to be the next thing we watched on our couches. I think that we're, we're teetering on that. Now, the good thing is, is that uh, MLG and League of Legends and a lot of these bigger communities have understood that the players that are watching this, the spectators, are people that are online and they're watching it through their PC or their Xbox or their PlayStation. So they're producing these events online that are now getting millions of viewers. And therefore, the advertisers are going to them saying, yeah, we would gladly give you some money to put our brand or our company or our product in front of your million viewers. So I think they're going that direction the right way. The problem is, is that this whole community is still being built from the top down. So until somebody like eBash, and what we're trying to do is step in and create this foundation so that there is a building block for these guys to be able to go to local events and play locally for a period of time before they have to start spending money and traveling. You know, I mean... You know, I think back to my high school days when we traveled. You played in a, in a conference that you didn't have to travel more than an hour in high school. When you go to the collegiate level, you know, you travel places that you can get to there and back in a, in a day. You know, you don't have to take entire weekends and go places to play. Even the Big Ten schools that are the top in the nation for basketball, they don't go somewhere for a weekend. You know, they travel in a day and they get back in a day. You know, we, we're building it from the top down and we're not giving any of these players a chance to be successful. We have to produce events that are at the high school level, that are on the local level, that guys can travel to in an hour, and they can go to on a weekend. They can go to on a Saturday and be back home on a Saturday so they don't have to spend a lot of money to go to regular events. If you could only play one game, football game, a season, you're, you wouldn't have a lot of success as a football team. 
you know, seasons for normal sports consist of multiple games. You know, the, the NFL plays 16, 17 games in a season. The NBA has 82 games. Major League Baseball is 162 games. You know, even in the high school, you know, ranks, we used to play a lot of games. Esports, for some reason, their seasons all culminate to a single event that is like once every six months. That's bizarre. We're not giving these guys any kind of regular practice or regular events that they can go to to play in a, in a competitive environment. Instead, they're online trying to get pickup scrims all the time through Twitter. That's not the right way to practice, and you're not going to have a lot of success as a team if you don't get a lot of real-world chances to play as a team. Do you see Ebash as being a vehicle for that growth? It's, it's going to have to be somebody like Ebash. I'll be super, super pissed if it's not us. You know, if it's not us, it better be somebody that bought us and I'm working for them and helping them build it. Um, it needs to be a physical location. It needs to be a company with physical locations that are there all the time. You know, it can't be something that comes in on a semi and sets up in a hotel conference room. I think there's still a place for those, and those can be the million dollar payout big events that everybody hopes to build up to. But guys, especially these young guys, cannot afford to travel to all these events once or twice a year and hope to earn money at those events to pay for them to travel to the next event. There has to be a company like eBash, hopefully eBash, that has physical locations. In five years, our plan is, is that we want to have 50 to 100 locations nationwide. So we'll go out and we'll put a location in Louisville and Cincinnati and Chicago and St. Louis and Columbus and we'll hit a, a spider web out from our Midwest and then we'll immediately jump out and try to get to other regions of the country so that those players can travel. We don't want them to have to get on planes. You know, we won't, don't want them to have to drive 10 or 15 hours to get somewhere. We want them to be able to go there on a regular basis and play. Um, you know, we want there to be local high school leagues going on that they can progress to the state level. You know, there's no reason to rethink that part of the current sports model and try to force these kids into an esports model that is just one or two big events a year. But, you know, it takes a physical location that's there all along. And the other thing I think people miss out on is that eBash is, you know, I'm super passionate about esports and I believe in it and I really want to see it succeed. But our success and our growth and our revenue comes from the regular gamer. So that is driven by the fact that we have physical locations that are open 362 days a year. You know, all those other days, we have lock-ins where middle school kids are coming in and eating pizza and just playing games casually. You know, that's where our bread and butter comes from. You know, professional players play the same game over and over and over, and they don't necessarily come in our stores on a regular basis and support us. So we have to have physical locations anyway, and we can just have those supported esports events by these general casual players that are coming into our store year-round. And then... Once a weekend, we have this big gathering of esports guys that come in and play their event, and we can also support them with some online events during the week, which we plan on starting.